Hello and welcome to Guidestock Global. My name is John Howell and I'm the editor. With me today I have Bashak Yildiz, Yildiz Orkun, who is a lawyer practicing here in Bodrum in Turkey. Bashak, hello. Hi, John. Now in this video we're going to cover contracts, and contracts being an absolutely fundamental part of any legal system. It is, absolutely. So let's start at the beginning. For a contract to be valid in Turkey, do you require any particular formalities? Can it, can it be verbal? Can it be written? How does that look? Uh, we have different type of contracts, which are all like a covered in the code of obligations mainly. That is our like a main code that we are looking as a reference for the contract terms. Uh, on the other hand, we have some special codes such as like an employment law or like a, a inheritance stuff. So in some specific cases, there are some speci specific rules which are not covered uh, by the code of uh, obligation. So uh, as an answer to your questions, we do have some certain rules for some type of contracts. Uh, so what you need to do is whatever contract you will be entering into, you have to look at the correct regulations. And in general terms, in Turkey you have freedom of contract, as we right. call it, and that means that anybody can enter into a contract to do anything that is legal. Yeah, I was just going to say, the only condition it has to be legal and moral. So I can't enter a contract with you to kill somebody, <laughs> but I can enter into a contract to buy a dog, or to sell a house, or anything at all that is not illegal or immoral. Correct. And in general terms, um, there is no required format for that contract. I know in some cases there is, but generally a contract could be a verbal contract, it could be a written contract, it could be scrawled on the back of a rock with, mm -hmm. if, if you wanted to. Um, yeah, as long as you are able to prove what the conditions yes. of the contract, so you can either do it verbally or like in writing, but as you mentioned, in some certain cases, we do require uh, like contracts in a specific format, such as like a notary uh, stamp is required, or a notary should be writing the contract. So, uh, but in general terms, the contrast, which is uh, including the wills of the parties clearly, is a binding contract. Yes, and of course. Going back just for a moment to verbal contracts, we use verbal contracts every day. We go into a shop, mm -hmm. we, we take a packet of biscuits off the shelf, we give it to the shopkeeper, we pay. That is a verbal contract. Yeah. Um, but it's worth remembering, isn't it, the, the, the words of the wise old boy who said that verbal contracts are not worth the paper they're written on. Uh, mm -hmm. They are not to be relied upon in any a serious situation. Correct. For the daily matters, obviously, you should be just uh, uh, going ahead with some verbal concert to make life easy. Yes. Uh, however, if you are doing some business or if you are purchasing uh, some uh, some goods like movables or immovables, which is valued, so you have to go uh, with a like a writing contract. Yes. And in general terms, written contracts are not just about uh, making it legally enforceable so that you can remember what was agreed five years down the road or ten years down the road. Yeah, I think it is also a benefit of the both parties yes. about the liabilities, yes. knowing the, uh, the actions that you need to carry with, so I think it is benefiting to everyone. But we'll come back to what goes in the contract in a minute. But Okay, so you've said already that there are certain types of contract that must be in a particular form, so let's just give some examples mm -hmm. of those. There's quite a lot of them, so this isn't an exhaustive list, but let's just give some examples of contracts that need to be in a particular form. So pick one. Yeah. I think the first one, very easy, the marriage. Yes. <laughs> it has to be before the necessary departments and it has to be in writing. Um, the second one, which is uh, very uh, like a commonly used in Turkey, is this uh, sale of a title deed. I mean, the sale of a property. It needs to be done before the land registry. So not just in writing, but the writing has to be done at the land registry. Correct. Yeah. Uh, and if you are, the this is most common uh, cases that we are facing, uh, especially with the non-national purchasers of a property. They are signing a private agreement. Uh, as a promissory agreement that they will be uh, like a, buying the property and the seller is 
promising to sell the, sell the property. And this is a specific uh, contract has to be done before a notary. Not only uh, like, a, a, like a, the notary is approving the signatures, basically the notary is writing the contract. So it has to be a notarial contract. So if you sign a, a promissory contract to buy a house saying, Mr. Smith will sell to Mr. Brown this house for the price of 300,000 lira, mm -hmm. um, that's just not going to be legally valid no. and it's not going to be enforceable. No, in terms of like ownership rights, it's not going to be enforceable. But of, of course, if you make some payments depending on the contract, this is a different there case. There will be evidence that you've made the payments, so you might be able to get your money back. Yeah, it's a matter of like unjust enrichment, but it's not, it's not giving a, yes. any right of ownership to the buyer yes. or to the seller. It's a very important point there. Um, and simple contracts, such as, for example, the sale of a car, must be done in front of a notary. Correct. So, for each type of contract you're thinking of entering into, you need to be alert to the fact that this could be one of the situations where in Turkey it requires a particular format to be valid. Exactly correct. And I would say in most of the uh, contracts, like it uh, needs to be written. So this is yes. the, the major condition that we are looking at and the other is like a either a notary should be doing that or a department of uh, authority. And even contracts that don't legally need to be written very often should be written anyway because it's much better. Yeah, this is an additional uh, like a protection obviously. Now, Bashak has dealt with this in a lot more detail in her written guide to contracts which is available at www.guides.global so do have a look at that uh, for the formalities involved. So Bashak, on the, so, so that's the formalities out of the way really. Um, in terms of the content of the contract, there are certain things that need to be in it for it to be legally enforceable, whether it's in front of a notary, whether it's a written contract, or indeed even a verbal contract. Uh, so what are the things we need to cover in a contract for it to be enforceable? Uh, first, the parties should be clear. Uh, who is entering the, into the contract has to be clearly stated uh, in the document or like a verbal agreement. So, for example, going back to my shop example, that's pretty obvious. I've taken the can of beans off the shelf, I've given it to the shopkeeper, I'm one party, he's the other. Absolutely clear. Correct. Yeah. Uh, and there should be the conditions of the contract. Uh, subject of the contract has to be uh, like a uh, placed within the uh, wording um, and the liability of the parties uh, should be in the contract otherwise you can just rely on the general uh, rules of uh, like a, a code of obligations um, uh, sometimes you can assign the uh, authorized not authorized actually uh, the place of uh, like a judgment, I mean, if you will be in dispute, you can assign the border course to so be... So if there's a dispute about this, it will be dealt with in accordance with Turkish law in the courts of border. Yeah, you, 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 will, you will have the freedom to choose in yes. some contrast, but in some contrast, you cannot really make an assignment by yourself because according to law, it has to be a certain place of uh, courts. Um, so these are the, uh, the, the first things that I've come up with, the uh, contracts. So the liability of the parties, subject of the contracts, and the contracts should be if both parties are uh, individuals, like a private uh, individuals, the uh, liabilities should be same for uh, both parties, so it should be an equal contract. Uh, if both parties are commercial bodies, then it is not required that necessarily, uh, but uh, we, we look for the uh, yes, the freedom of the contract is, of course, accepted, but it has to be a fair contract. Otherwise, in case of any dispute, the judge may decide uh, something else that you decided into the contract. In the contract, yeah. one of the things here in Turkey, which is interesting from a lawyer's point of view and unusual, is that you do not have in your code of obligations, uh, and we will have a link to that with the video. But you don't have in your code of obligations a list of things that says for a contract to be valid it has to do one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. It's spread out throughout the whole code because it changes, uh, like a, the requirements changing uh, 
depending on the type of the contract yeah. as well. So yeah. if you are signing a contract with regards to immovable sale, then of course the details of the title it has to be in there. But yeah. uh, so I think we, 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 we are really looking to the general rules yes. of code of obligations. Yes, there are many rules stated in the code of obligations. Uh, but you just need to apply it to the relevant contract. But the good thing is that um, there is nothing required in Turkey for a contract to be valid which will be a surprise to people coming from another country. There are no sort of hidden clauses that must be there and if, it, if they're not there the whole thing is no good. So of course if you come from America, if you come from Germany, if you come from Singapore, you will expect, of course you've got to name the parties to the contract, mm -hmm. of course you've got to say what it is you're buying and selling, of course you've got to put in the price, of course you've got to put in you know, any special conditions like you will deliver this to me. Mm -hmm. um, all that's pretty common sense and pretty obvious common. stuff. Only the procedure may differ uh, country exactly. to country, but um, uh, when, if you are doing the contract with the assistant of a lawyer, so they will be just uh, giving you the necessary yes. advice about that. Now we've talked about making the contract. Um, does the contract need to be written in Turkish? It doesn't have to be. No. Um, this is normally why we put the contracts both in Turkish and uh, in a different language, and we usually choose the valid uh, side uh, as a Turkish side. Because in case of a dispute, if we go to the courts, uh, the court will be uh, appointing a sworn translator for translation of the document. And uh, we are a little bit delicate about interpretation. So instead of a sworn translator making the interpretation on your behalf, I would rather to have it uh, yes. like a, a uh, written by a lawyer. You're absolutely <laughs> right. It, it's bad enough having to go to court with a contract anyway. But if you're going to court with a contract and you don't even know what it is the judge is going to be told the contract says mm -hmm. because you depend on a translator of unknown quality, mm -hmm. uh, then that just makes it double difficult. Yeah. Yes. So you produce contracts normally in two columns, left hand column Turkish, right hand column French or German or English or whatever the other language might be. Yeah, and we have a specific clause saying that in case of a dispute, Turkish side of this contract will be legally binding. Yes. The other uh, like a wording is just for the understanding of the people yes. who cannot speak the language. Yes. Going forward, uh, let's assume that you've signed a contract and uh, it doesn't all go well. No one ever talks about the contract, so it should go perfectly and there's no problems. But if it doesn't go well, then there will come a time when you have to do something about it. Yeah. Um, if there is a problem, with a contract. We deal with that in a great deal of detail in our guide to dealing with disputes and litigation. But just very, very simply now, what would be the way in which a Turkish person would expect to deal with a problem in a contract? Would, would they try an informal solution first or would they go straight to court? Um, informal solution uh, still need to uh, include some formality because uh, let's imagine there is a problem uh, and one of the parties is not really um, doing what they have to do according to the contract. Uh, instead of like unofficial settlements, we usually send a notifi uh, notification through a notary because you have to prove that you notified the other party about the problem in a good will and give the uh, sufficient time to sort the problem out. Uh, and if still not recognized, if the other party is not uh, like a, a, um, dealing with the problem in a good will, then you, you have to go to court. But even the settlement, uh, we usually go for a notification through a notary uh, to be uh, binding in the future in case of any dispute that you have uh, shown your goodwill and uh, notified other party in on time. Okay. Finally. Um Let's just talk about preparing contracts. And I know this sounds a bit like a job creation program for lawyers, but uh, really, if you're going to prepare a contract, particularly an international contract where you're in one country and someone else is in the other country, it really does make sense to have your lawyer do that, doesn't it? Um, I think it is uh, more than making a sense. I think it is um, sort of like a compulsory because 
if both parties are not from the same country, first of all, there is a uh, discussion about which country law will be binding. So, and it makes a huge difference. So, I think for an international uh, like a contrast, I would suggest to have a lawyer in place in the first place. And just also to avoid misunderstandings, to make sure that all of the key things have been covered and that they're clear to both parties. Yeah, but <laughs> if it's a contract, it's not like a possible to cover everything no, uh, no. like up front, but it, like, try to make it more um, clear and also uh, try to cover all uh, conditions uh, asked by the parties clearly written in the contract is going to be the first aspect. Yes. Basha, thank you very much. Thank you, John. We hope you found that useful, and as ever, if you did, please like this video or follow the channel. And do remember that Bashak has written a much fuller guide to contracts in Turkey, which is available at www.guides.global. Also, please remember that we have written a book, uh, jointly authored by Bashak, by me and a couple of other people, called How Things Really Work in Turkey, and you can get that as well via our website. See you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you.